One of the most frustrating things about being a veterinarian is hearing about someone who was quoted something like $12,000 for their dog who's sick with a pyometra and knowing that I can help them for one-tenth of the cost or less. If you don't know what a pyometra is, it's a life-threatening infection of the uterus that occurs in about 25% of dogs who are not spayed. I was able to help a dog who was quoted $12,000 and did the surgery for $1,200, which I still kind of thought was expensive. I do about 30 to 40 spays and neuters a day, and I usually have at least one pyometra. Why does this happen? There has been plenty of content about greedy private equity corporations buying up private veterinary clinics and raising prices for their executives and shareholders, and that is 100% true but there's another aspect few people are talking about. Veterinarians don't realize it doesn't have to be this way and they have the power to change this. What's the solution? It starts with improving our clinical skills first. Veterinary students are graduating from school without the experience they need to feel secure in their skills. They're sitting ducks for manipulative corporations that promise them mentoring and 30 minute appointment slots with no pressure to perform surgery. I'm going to say more about this in part two, so be sure to hit the follow button. If veterinary students received more live tissue handling experience and performed 50 or more surgeries before graduation, more students would realize how rewarding it is to work in high volume access to care clinics. Millions of animals across the country do not have access to veterinary care. Not just dogs and cats, farmed animal veterinary care too. And some veterinary schools are failing to take advantage of this opportunity. Instead of opening community clinics where veterinary students are providing care under the guidance of experienced veterinarians, like how I teach students surgery, some schools are purchasing healthy animals from pet stores, auctions, and biomedical supply companies and making students practice unnecessary procedures on them and then unaliving the animals before they wake up. We just published our findings about how widespread this practice is in the Journal of Veterinary Medical Education. These terminal labs deny students the opportunity to practice post-anesthesia recovery and see how their patients do. Maybe this is intentional to keep students feeling insecure. I have a lot more to say about this and the justifications university faculty use for why they do this. So please follow for part two and go to ourhonor.org to sign our letters asking schools to provide more access to care surgical training.